This video is about trisaminal nerve. Trisaminal nerve is the fifth cranial nerve. Obviously, trisaminal nerve is one of the toughest cranial nerves to study because because of its complicated course and numerous branches and all that. But don't worry, you come to the right place. Welcome to Med with Med Simple. If you're new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can keep watching all my upcoming videos for free. So, let us start the discussion by looking at the basics of trigeminal nerve. This picture right here is the core thing you must remember about trigeminal nerve. So, this picture should go deep inside the hippocampus and has to stay there forever. So, with this picture, you can do, uh, the, do about 95% of the things about trigeminal nerve. Okay? So, first, uh, let me tell you about the three main functions of trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve provides sensory supply to the face. So if someone touches your face and you can feel that, that's because of trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal nerve is responsible for corneal reflex, which is, an, which is a very important reflex. If something touches your cornea, our eye naturally blinks to prevent further uh, damage to cornea. That is because of corneal reflex and is mediated by trigeminal nerve. The muscles of mastication, namely masseter, lateral and medial pterygoids, and temporalis, are supplied by trigeminal nerve. So, if the muscles of mastication are not working, we will not be able to chew and grind food properly so that it will severely impair digestion. So, so with this you would have got an overview of the functions of trigeminal nerve and by now you would have understood the importance of studying trigeminal nerve. The three main branches of trigeminal nerve are ophthalmic nerve, maxillary nerve and mandibular nerve. When someone asks you about the branches of trisomy nerve, you should just tell without thinking. So this is super important thing you must remember. So some basics about individual branches of trisomy nerve. Ophthalmic nerve provides sensory supply to the upper one third of the face. The area which is marked in green color in this diagram are the, the areas of the face which are supplied by ophthalmic nerve. In addition to that, it also mediates corneal reflex. The maxillary nerve provides sensory supply to the middle third of the face, which is marked in blue color in this picture. In addition to that, it also provides secretor motor fibers to lacrimal gland, which secretes the tears in the eyes. The mandibular nerve, which is the third branch of trigeminal nerve, provides motor supply to the muscles of mastication. In addition to that, it provides sensory supply to the lower third of the face. So these are some of the basics about the branches of trisomal nerve. Until now, I have discussed about the basics of trisomal nerve. So these are the must know things about trisomal nerve. And if someone asks you about trisomal nerve, you should be able to answer whatever I have told you until this slide. Okay, so it's super important. So before moving further, uh, make sure that you understood whatever I've told until this point of time. If you have any doubts, so please make sure to put them in the comment section below. I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. So let me tell you about the con concepts of functional columns and nuclei of cranial nerves in the brainstem. So there are basically seven functional columns in the brainstem. These are nothing but the the function the functions of Various uh, cranial nerve nuclei and the cranial nerve fibers are segregated and put as separate functional columns in the brain stem. Okay, so that is called as functional columns. So there are basically seven functional columns in the brain stem which are listed here. The things which are marked in red color are what are actually relevant for trigeminal nerve. So trigeminal nerve fibers are carried in the special visceral afferent fibers and general somatic afferent fibers. So as I told you, these two are the things which you should remember for trigeminal nerve and I'll explain to you uh, about these. Okay, so you need not remember, it's very easy to understand about uh, what these actually are. So for those of you who don't know, afferent fibers are the fibers which carry sensory supply and enters the brainstem and takes this information from distal part of the body to the brain okay so that is afferent fibers and efferent fibers are, are the fibers which carry the information from the brain to the distal organs like muscles and tries to exert it 
uh, I mean exert the action so that is the difference between afferent and efferent nerves so if we know this it will be easy to understand what special visceral efferent column does and what general somatic afferent column does as I told you efferent fibers are motor fibers so the special visceral efferent column are uh, by now you should you should have understood that these are something to do with motor supply and the word special uh, visceral means uh, they are going to supply the muscles which are derived from the branchial arches okay so the as you uh, if you remember something from embryology we have something known as first branchial arch second branchial arch third branchial arch and so on so these are some uh, embryology things and if you remember the nerve to the first branchial arch is mandibular nerve and if you can link this the mandibular nerve is the branch of frigible nerve so by now you would have got something if you didn't understand it's fine you just have to remember that special visceral efferent column is derived from the motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve okay so one of the nucleus of trigeminal nerve is the motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve this motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve will will provide no fibers which um, are called as special visceral efferent column and these supplies the muscles which are derived from the first branchial arch the general somatic afferent column are sensory fibers since the word afferent is mentioned here and there are three sensory nuclei of trigeminal nerve you have to remember the names of these three sensory nuclei this includes chief sensory nucleus, spinal nucleus, and mesencephalic nucleus. As you can see here, uh, there are totally four nuclei of trigeminal nerve. One is motor, and that nucleus is called as motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve. And the other one is, uh, the other three are sensory. So this includes chief sensory nucleus, spinal nucleus, and mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve. So there are totally four nuclei of trigeminal nerve in the brain stem. So first let's see about the special visceral efferent column. So these fibers, as I've told you, are derived from the motor nuclei of trigeminal nerve. So since they are efferent, they'll supply the muscles. They supply the muscles derived from the first branchial arch, as I've told you already. So these muscles are muscles of mastication, tensor tympani, tensor palti, anterior belly of digastric and mylohyoid. Of all these, the, the must know is and the most important to know are the muscles of mastication. So some uh, basics about the general somatic afferent column. As we all know, these fibers carry sensory supply of the face. Okay, so uh, these fibers are derived from sensory nuclei of trigeminal nerve. Since they are afferent, they carry sensory, uh, the sensations and the, trigemin, the function of trigeminal nerve is to carry sensation from the face. So there are three uh, nuclei, uh, sensory nuclei of trigeminal nerve, as we have already seen in the previous slide. These are the chief sensory nucleus, spinal nucleus, and mesencephalic nucleus. The chief sensory nucleus of trigeminal nerve carries touch sensation from the face. Okay, so if someone touches your face and you can feel that, that is because of chief sensory nucleus. You can remember this by remembering that uh, the chief uh, sensation is touch okay so the first sensation which someone can give you is touch like if someone touches you uh, that's the first thing which uh, they can provide you okay right? uh, I mean uh, if they have to inflict pain on you they should touch you before doing that okay so the first sensation which the, which they can provide you is touch okay so that is the chief sensation so you can remember the chief sensory nucleus of trigeminal nerve carries touch sensation from the face the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve carries pain and temperature the mesencephalic nucleus of trigeminal nerve carries proprioception okay so these are some of the uh, basic functions of the three sensory nuclei of trigeminal nerve so of all these three sensory nuclei uh, the most interesting one is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve I find this interesting because this the, the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve is quite long. 
uh, as you can see here it extends from the pons in the brainstem and it goes till the second cervical spinal segment in the spinal cord so that's very long and there are three parts of uh, spinal nucleus of trisomen nerve namely pars rostralis, pars interpolaris and pars caudalis from cranial to caudal direction that is from top to bottom so in this picture you can see the arrangement in the midbrain you can see the mesencephalic nucleus and you can see the principal sensory nucleus below and uh, below the, uh, the, uh, the principal sensory nucleus you can see the spinal nucleus just try to remember that the spinal nucleus goes from the pons to the second cervical spinal cord segment so it's quite long and in this picture you can also see that uh, from the pons the trigeminal uh, nerve arises and initially it forms a swelling uh, which is the which is called as ganglion okay so since this ganglion is arising from the trigeminal nerve it is called as trigeminal ganglion from this trigeminal ganglion, three main branches of trigeminal nerve arises. So these three main branches of trigeminal nerve are ophthalmic nerve, maxillary nerve, and mandibular nerve. In addition to that, the motor branch of trigeminal nerve, which arises from the motor nucleus of trigeminal nerve, also comes separately. I'll tell about that now um, when I talk about mandibular nerve. Okay. So first let's see about the important points about ophthalmic nerve. The ophthalmic nerve arises from the trigeminal ganglion. Okay, so it runs in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus. The cavernous sinus is one of the dural venous sinuses which is present inside the cranial cavity. So it runs in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus. To be specific, the cavernous sinus are present on the lateral sides of the a pituitary gland okay so you must be uh, knowing where pituitary gland is located right so just lateral to the pituitary gland we have the cavernous sinuses on the in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinuses the ophthalmic nerve will be running and the ophthalmic nerve enters the orbit okay the orbit is the cavity which contains the eye eyeball okay um, so it enters the orbit through superior orbital fissure and there are three terminal branches of ophthalmic nerve. These branches are lacrimal, frontal, and nasociliary. The maxillary nerve leaves the skull through foramen rotundum. You must remember this foramen, okay? The maxillary nerve leaves the skull through foramen rotundum. It enters the pterygopalatine fossa. So, since there is a ganglion in the pterygopalatine fossa, it is called as pterygopalatine ganglion. And while the maxillary nerve enters the pterygopalatine fossa, it gives a branch called, called as the ganglionic branch to the pterygopalatine ganglion. After that, the maxillary nerve enters the orbit through inferior orbital fissure. If you remember, the ophthalmic nerve entered the orbit through superior orbital fissure. After entering the inferior orbital fissure, the maxillary nerve gets a whole new different name. It will be called as infraorbital nerve. The infraorbital nerve then emerges through the through a foramen known as infraorbital foramen and uh, enters the face and supplies the middle third of the face. The branches of maxillary nerve, when it is present in the midbrain, uh, uh, I mean when it is present in the uh, uh, the, uh, the when the when it is present in the ca cranial cavity, it it provides meningeal branches to supply the meninges. And then when it enters the pterygopalatine fossa, it provides ganglionic branches to the pterygopalatine ganglion. In addition to that, it supplies various branches like zygomatic nerve, posterior superior alveolar nerve, middle superior alveolar nerve, palpebral nerve, lateral nasal nerve, labial nerve. In this, posterior superior alveolar nerve and middle superior alveolar nerve are the nerves which sup supplies the sensory supply to the upper upper teeth, upper row of teeth. And then mandibular nerve. The mandibular nerve leaves the skull through foramen or veil. Just as it leaves the foramen or veil, the motor branch, the, the motor nerve of tri, the motor branch of the trigeminal nerve joins with the mandibular nerve. Okay, so the ophthalmic and maxillary branches of trigeminal nerve, as we saw, arise from the trigeminal ganglion and had fibers which are only sensory fibers. 
whereas the mandibular nerve after arising from the um, trigeminal ganglion is joined by the motor branch of trigeminal nerve so the mandibular nerve is a mixed nerve it will it will have branches of both uh, sensory fibers and motor fibers so it is a mixed nerve it enters the infratemporal fossa it has branches uh, it has fibers of both uh, motor and sensory fibers the branches of mandibular nerve are meningeal branches uh, mesenteric nerve which supplies the masseter muscle nerve to medial pterygoid deep temporal nerves chatu in number which supplies the temporalis muscles uh, the lateral pterygoid nerve buccal nerve auricular temporal nerve lingual nerve inferior alveolar nerve the inferior alveolar nerve supplies the lower teeth okay lower row of teeth so some clinical aspects about trigeminal nerve when the trigeminal nerve is injured it can lead to paralysis of the third nerve the fifth nerve so this condition is called as trigeminal nerve palsy the manifestations will be loss of sensations on face loss of corneal reflex paralysis of muscles of mastication it's very easy to remember the manifestations of trigeminal nerve palsy because we know the functions of trigeminal nerve and if trigeminal nerve is injured the functions of trigeminal nerve will be lost leading to the leading to the following manifestations in addition to that there can be mild hearing impairment and that is because of uh, injury of the nerve which supplies tensor tympani muscle which is involved in facilitating hearing and there's another clinical condition called trigemin trigemin neuralgia this condition is characterized by sudden onset and short duration of severe pain in the area of cutaneous distribution of one or more divisions of trigeminal nerve so this is a severe painful condition and this uh, usually involves the area supplied by the, max uh, the, uh, the maxillary and mandibular branches of trigeminal nerve okay so this is a severe condition and which is with, which is associated with severe pain and the uh, interesting thing about this condition is that the pain will be present along the area supplied by that branch of trigeminal nerve okay so it will be present only in that part of the face we came to the end of this video if you like this video you can support my work by donating on www.patreon.com slash midwits made simple again don't forget to check out this merge the link is in the description so thank you so much for watching i hope you like this video and, uh, and you, you have learned something new uh, from this video if you like this video please make sure to hit the like button and you can tell your suggestions whatever they are in the uh, comment section below so that i can improve and you can ask for any videos in the comment section below and i'll try to make it for you guys and don't forget to share this video to your friends and most importantly subscribe to my channel to watch all my upcoming videos thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next video